I do, I do, I do. All right, guys. Welcome to Unlock Your First Six Figures Morning Show. I am your host, Shay Cannon. I'm an award-winning, award-winning uh, fractional chief operating officer to an exclusive clientele of six and seven-figure CEOs. However, I have a mission of uh, <laughs> helping small business owners and entrepreneur, entrepreneurs who are spinning their wheels and struggling to make it to their first six figures in business. Uh, now, I want to teach you how to make the money and create the time freedom, make the money and create time freedom. My freedom looks like living and working my business from anywhere in the world. Uh, my annotated version is I am now in Mexico after years of living outside of the United States. Now, let's get started because this business value thing uh, is, is awesome. I don't know uh, where you were over the weekend, but most of us digital marketers and uh, small business owners and um, entrepreneurs were all struck by uh, Alex Hermosi's book launch on Saturday. Okay. Again, if you're on my email list, you're going to get a recap. You can, you're even getting a link to the replay. Um, and I'll put the replay in these comments on later. Uh, but if you don't know, Alex Hermosi is a best selling author. Um, he wrote the book. Um, $100 million offer. Uh, and he's come back with volume two, which is $100 million leads. And that was the book launch on Saturday. And the amazing thing to watch was he used all the psychology of sales that we talked about last week. It was uh, all inspiring to see, okay? Um, but now we're trying to go kind of beyond using the um, psychology of sales like now we have a service or a product and we're selling it. We're using the psychology of sales. Uh, we're a solo practitioner. What do we do next, right? What do we do next? Well, um, after you go through your warm audience of leads or warm audience of people to buy from you, that's people that you know, people that, uh, that know who you know, um, that have bought from you, then to grow, what you're going to have to get ready to do next is to market right to market however a lot of us go out there and we start trying to market what we have to sell before we are ready to really take advantage of marketing and get the sales that we truly are trying to get okay so this week we're talking about getting your business ready for more getting your business ready for more um, all businesses hit a point where they want to grow um, growth usually starts with um, you trying to sell more as the only person in your business, right? You trying to get more customers beyond your, um, your network and the word of mouth network. And that is marketing. So before you can get started with marketing, you need a few things to really, really take advantage of marketing. Okay. Now, some of you are, are probably thinking back to when you first started and you're thinking, you know, some things I've learned since then that when I had that warm audience that I knew how to get that warm audience to work for me um, and I knew how to contact cold audiences, right? Um, I wish I had known then what I know now. Well, I'm telling you now what you're going to wish you had known if you don't take advantage of this right now. Uh, so let's talk about what you need to market, okay? So to get your business ready to market, you need to be clear, okay? Your business needs clarity, okay? And that clarity looks like knowing exactly who you serve. Now, again, <laughs> the myth is you have to try to sell to everybody or you're leaving money on the table. When the truth is, if you try to sell to everybody, you're actually selling to uh, nobody's listening, okay? Because you need to be not selling to everybody. You need to be trying to find your somebody, okay? Um, we have, we have um, referred to this as your ideal client, your ideal client avatar, your ideal client persona, uh, whatever. But it's best when you don't think of a group of people and instead you think of one person. OK, that helps you make decisions in your business when you pick the one person that is your ideal client and that is your somebody. OK, because what happens is now you can craft a message just for that somebody. And when they read it, they know you're talking to them. OK, so you need your somebody. That's that's to start with. Next, what you're going to need is you need to know their pain points, okay? You need to be able to identify with the things that they say are going wrong and how they feel about it, okay? Because you're going to use those pain points and how you know they feel about it and the words that they use to describe it, okay? To describe it so that they understand you're talking to them, 
All right. So you need to know your somebody and you need to know their pain points. Next, you need to know what transformation they want. You need to know what is the dream, right? What is the life that they want without these pain points? Of course, they want the pain to stop, but that's never enough. How do they want to flourish? Okay, what does the transformation for them look like? Why? So that you can use those words too in your marketing message. And finally, you want to know how do they want to receive their transformation? Okay, how do they want to receive their transformation? Every ideal client doesn't want to receive the solution the same way because sometimes the way that you give out the solution causes more problems for them. Sometimes the way you give out a solution is not as convenient for them. Right. So you need to know exactly how they want to receive the transformation. Now, let me give you some examples of that. OK, because if you have a DIY service, that's do it yourself. Right. Something where you're teaching them how to solve the problem themselves. That's a solution, but it may not be their solution because they don't want to take the time to do it themselves. They want to pay somebody else to do it. So they don't want a DIY solution. OK. So another solution could be you have a done for you solution, right? And so you say, okay, pay us this amount of money and we'll do it for you. Well, what if your ideal client um, is still in a stage where they think they can do everything themselves? So they would want the DIY solution. And then you have the people that are in the middle, right? You have the people that are a hybrid where they want you to kind of do it with them. They want you to tell them how to do it and be right there with them as they do it. That's a done with you. So you have to know how your client wants to receive their transformation. So with all of this clarity, that's when your message is going to be received. And again, they're going to feel like your message is talking directly to them. Okay. So that is getting your business ready for marketing. You have to be clear. You have to know your who. You have to know what their pain points are. You have to know what transformation they want and how they want to receive it, okay? What is the dream and how do they want to receive uh, going through the transformation to get to this dream? All right, now, I know Dr. Tachi may have been the only one here for all of that. Dr. Tachi, when it comes to the marketing and getting your business ready for marketing, using this clarity, um, what say you about the, I'm going to say, the pain points of small businesses not having this clarity? Let's go there. Hamster wheel. <laughs> that's, that's the first thing I think of, that you're constantly on a hamster wheel and spinning because you don't know exactly who you're talking to, who the message is for. And I, I, I can get that sometimes it is difficult to identify, especially if you have a service, you know, with a product, sometimes it's a little easier. Oh, this is for this. But even then with a product, you know, there are some uh, unseen or unintended uses, uses that, that, that could um, work for another audience. So I, I, 100%. So I guess for, for me, it's, uh, I have a lot of different audiences because I have a lot of different business ventures. So it's clearly delineating who, which audience is which. And it also doesn't mean that you won't have a secondary audience. Right, yeah, that I love that. You're not about, but your primary audience is who is probably going to buy first, and then you could think about maybe crafting something for that secondary audience. Love it, love it, love it. All right, but what we know is we need to give people one focus. So I want them to focus on their primary audience. Now the great thing is, anytime you focus on your primary audience other somebodies can self-identify also, right? But you still want to stay targeted to your primary somebody um, so that you don't get lost in the sauce. So that's what we'll say about that. So marketing, right? This week, we're talking about how to get your business ready for more. And the first topic is marketing and how to get your business ready is clarity, okay? You have to know exactly who your who is. A lot of you I'm going to say, you know, about three or four characteristics of your who. Oh, my who is a black woman that makes $75,000 a year. Um, she wants to own her own business um, and she wants to sell products, right? That is not enough information, right? And if somebody only knew four things about you, you would say they don't know you at all, right? So you need to know at least 20 to 30 characteristics of your ideal client to really be clear on who you're serving, right? <laughs> clear, clear. Now, you want to know what are their pain points. That means you need to dive deep, okay? 
And sometimes what's happening is you say, oh, um, she, she just hasn't made it to her first six figures in business. Well, that's all that I say, but I know my ideal client very well. I have other characteristics, right? So I know um, the things, the pain points that she is um, going through because she hasn't made it to her first six figures in business yet. I know the negative thinking that she tends to have. I know um, her buying behavior. I know um, what happens when she feels like um, she's almost made it, but she hasn't. All these things. So you need to know your demographics and your psychographics and your behaviors of your ideal client. Or you're not necessarily making decisions for the one persona like you should. And that's why it's one persona rather than a whole group of people. I want you to think about how you can have a group of people who are similarly situated and then some, somebody in that group still doesn't eat chicken, right? Somebody in that group doesn't like the air to be on too high. Somebody in that group, you get what I'm saying, right? So picking a group, there's still going to be differences in that group where you can't talk to them all the same way. You can't give them all the same things. So this is why we don't use a group. We use a persona. Because when you think about a person, you can go very detailed, right? So think about having to make a group of, a group of people in a room happy versus having to make one person happy. If you had to make one person happy, you can do a deep dive in who that person is. What do they like? What do they dislike? And this is your ideal client persona, okay? So this is the part of that clarity you need to have. Um, you need to know the pain points. Why? Because you want to know what pain you're alleviating, but you also want them to understand that you know what pain they're in and use the words they use to describe their pain, okay? You want to know what the dream is, right? Some of us are assuming we know. Some of us are assuming we know, and we're solving the problem for, for good reasons, but maybe not the reason that your ideal client highly prioritizes, right? Have you ever heard the phrase, you have to give people what they want, right? So you sell them what they want and you give them what they need so they still get to the place that they're trying to go, all right? You're the expert, so you should know how to do that. Um, also, we want to give them uh, the solution in a format that they deem valuable, that they will take advantage of and actually have their problem solved. So all of this together is clarity, okay? So with that recap, Heather, what, what problems have you hit when you did not have clarity in your marketing? Uh, well, number one, I think I had no idea to ask all those questions, right? Yeah, so. Yeah. When I said, oh, I want to help women tell their stories. And it was all very like fluffy and ob obtuse, right? It wasn't targeted. It wasn't which woman in which demographic, in which industry or any, any of that. And now that I have identified her as this one person, mm -hmm. the messaging is much more targeted um, and it has evolved. So when I first started and I was all, woo, you know, fluffy and whatever and unfocused, I didn't know what to say or who to talk to. And then I was attracting people who couldn't afford anything. So that was a problem. Yeah. Um, and now I'm talking to, I mean, it's still evolving a little bit, but now I know I, I can answer all those questions. I can tell you um, not only how much she makes every year, but what does she like to do for fun? What where does she tend to live? Are her kids grown teenagers or just maybe she's childless? What kind of car is she driving? Where does she like to eat? Like I can answer those questions now. So I'm off the hamster wheel. Yes. Hamster wheel, Dr. Tachi has taught us about. Yes. All right, Glow. Um, now that I've told you uh, about clarity in your business, uh, what have been some of the problems that you have um, encountered due to not having the clarity? And let's see if Glow can come to the mic because she can't always. But Glow, if you can't, just use the chat. Uh, she said, hey, lady, she's going to use the chat and tell us. Um, meanwhile, I'll go to Stacy. Stacy, I don't know if you can come off the mic from Africa, but you can go in the chat if you need to. But what are, now that you are clear or now that you know how to get clear, what, what uh, problems have you been having with your ideal client and marketing that now you know may be attributed to not being clear and having clarity? Well, um, the one thing that you got me focused on is just, uh, you know, wellness coaching. 
uh, and then let everything else fall under that umbrella. Um, because I, I think I was just all over the place and I had the warm audience that you described earlier. There are people that I know or somebody else, you know, so that's how I was getting clients. Uh, but it, when I started focusing on the wellness coaching, which was a couple of years ago, um, I, I was like Heather, I was attracting people, but the people who couldn't afford what, what I was offering. So, um, you know, full circle again, you know, like she was saying about the, the hamster wheel, I'm still on it a little bit, but I'm, I'm working to get off of it. Yes. Yes. I love that. And just so that people understand people can be your ideal client in every other way, but if they can't afford your service, that cancels out everything else. Okay, so that makes them not your ideal client. All right, thank you, Stacey. Uh, so Dr. LaFera is with us. Good morning, Dr. LaFera. Thank you for joining us on the morning show. You are always welcome to come on. And so we're glad, glad that you're here today. Uh, when you hear me describe uh, what you need to be clear before you go to marketing, can you tell me some things that, that were obstacles that you used to um, encounter before you really got clear with your marketing? And let's see if Dr. LaFera can come off the mic. She said, good morning. Mm -hmm. There you okay. go. Hey, um, all right. So I'm still getting clear with my um, marketing messaging. So, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so some of the things that I encounter is um, like what Heather was talking about before, kind of um, attracting the wrong people to um, so have a huge email list. And um, most of them are not buyers. Um, and so I am trying to, um, so I've had to focus on, even though I primarily started out being product based, I've had to focus on talking to the, the people who I know, uh, mostly buy my products, uh, okay. and like their people and not, um, and so like, like, just like the service people I've had to start looking at, like their pain points and, and talking to that. Um, so far I've kind of been talking, I haven't been talking to a persona. I've been talking to like women over 40 that are perimenopausal, um, that buy beauty products or that care how they look and want natural stuff. So, um, I've had to start trying to grow a community instead of, um, people who want to buy a product. And, um, so that's helped me to start getting clear. What you're talking about has started helping me to get clear on the fact that I need to grow a community of of people with a problem, like an a problem is not necessarily, you know, specifically always gonna be the product that I'm selling. Mm -hmm. Um so then I have other content that I can talk to them about and not just, you know, that one product that I'm selling to kind of, you know, keep them engaged and not always feel like I'm selling to them. So that's, that's some of the stuff that I've um, noticed lately. Um, and I, I think that answers your question. So it does. <laughs> it does. Thank you so much. And it, you add value add in there also, because we know that community building is a great thing to do, but you community build best when you're talking to a persona and then everybody that self identifies with that song, persona comes together as a community. So I love that, Dr. Dr. Um, LaFera. Thank you for adding that. Uh, Glow says she, um, the problems that she has encountered is not knowing her demographic and their needs. Um, so yeah, we, we got to get down to that. Now, it's easy to say that you need clarity, right? But if y'all know me, you know that I'm going to give you some tips on how to get clarity. Okay. Stacey, I see you with your hand up. Let me get these tips out. And then, Hey, who knows? I might uh, actually so ask, answer your question. Right? So how do you define your target audience? Okay. So you can create a detailed persona. Okay. You can create it, understanding the demographics, the psychographics and the, and the um, behavioral um, traits that they have of the ideal client you want to serve. Right. Or you can look at who has been buying from you. Right. So if you listen to what Dr. LaFera said, she said she started selling a product, but then she paid attention to who was actually buying the product. Right. So some of you have a choice. You can get out here and you can sell to who you who you thought you wanted to sell to, or you can pay attention to who is actually buying and change things up to then talk to them. You have a choice. 
right? So let me tell you, if you don't want to sell to necessarily who is buying from you, or you want to go with who your ideal client is, then what you have to do is change your messaging. You have to get clearer, right? Because it, sometimes there's a difference between who you want to buy from you and who is buying from you. And if you don't want who is buying from you, then you need to change your messaging to attract who you want to buy from you. Now, why would a business owner not necessarily want who is buying from them to buy from them? It could be a lot of things, right? They could be misaligned with the way that you perform your service right? They could be more of a headache than they are um, a, a good feeling. And that may be not the reason you went into business, okay? Um, to service them may take more than what you anticipated. So you can change your ideal client a little bit and maybe not have to put that extra in there, right? I say all the time, a lot of people want high ticket clients until they understand <laughs> that high ticket clients have high ticket demands right? So some of y'all might want to come down off that high ticket client um, because you may not want to service them at the level they are demanding. So that is an example, right? So you can create um, the persona that you feel like is the ideal client and then do some research. You can see who is coming to you. Um, you can consider conducting surveys and interviews of the people you think are your ideal client to get more information about them. So that's how you can get clarity on your ideal client. How do you get clarity on the pain points? Well, again, conduct some market research. Um, you can do surveys. You can do interviews. You can also go out on the World Wide Web. Have y'all heard it called that in a while? World Wide Web, www, um, and see what keywords they're using, what phrases they're using, how are they discussing their problems. Um, that You can go to message boards and forums to see where they're talking about it, okay? And that's how you can get what their pain points are, how they prioritize them, uh, what words they're using, what effect it's having on them, okay? Then you want to know, uh, you want to help them to envision the transformation. So what you want to do is you want to go to those same places to see how are they talking about solving the pain point, right? What are they saying is the ideal destination on this journey? What does that look like for them? Okay. And then you want to use that to craft stories. Okay. If you have served clients before, you want to talk about their wins, how you got them to the transformation, how it felt, what did it look like, okay? So this is how we're gonna use helping them to envision the transformation. Then we wanna tailor make our, our version of the solution to be exactly what they want their version of the solution to be, okay? Everybody doesn't wanna get to the solution the same way. So you need to deep dive into your particular client avatar and see how is it they best want to be served. Again, I gave you examples, DIY, uh, done, done for you, done with you, uh, do it yourself, right? Which one would they rather? And again, you have to price for the transformation. So the same person that may want a done for you service needs to be able to afford a done for you service, okay? So now you have to like choose your marketing channels, craft your compelling content, um, engage and listen to what the people have to say, measure, right? So you do things, you measure it and you adjust based on the data, and then you add in a personal approach, right? So I want you to be a real person when you're doing all this marketing stuff, right? Especially when you are the face of your business. And most of us who are solo practitioners, you are the business, okay? So Stacy, did that answer any of the questions that you had? And if not, let me know what your question was. I don't think it was a question. It was a statement, but I'm good. Keep going. Well, that was the end of it. That's why I'm ready for your statement. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just uh, going off of what Dr. LaFera said about, you know, building a community. And I remember when I started, uh, you know, building out my private Facebook group and I had people, you know, with good intentions trying to, you know, invite people. And at the time I didn't have the questions and I have like a lot of people who aren't engaging and I don't know how to get them out of the group. Because, you know, um, I can't even remember who invited whom, but, um, you know, what she said just resonated with me. That, so it was more of a statement. 
Most definitely. And you're witnessing, Stacey, me growing this community into like minds is what I call it, right? Like minds. I want I want it to be, um, you know, entrepreneurs and business owners that are in business trying to make it to their first six figures in business, right? So I want the community to be wider and bigger than who I actually would serve a little bit, right? So who I actually serve best are service-based businesses. But you don't really hear me talk about that because the tips and stuff that I give in the community are great for service-based, product-based, hybrid, you know, whatever, right? But the ones I actually want to come and take my course, the ones that I actually want to come and get a strategy session with me, those are going to be service-based. So what we know about marketing is you have top of funnel, right? Which is all the people that are, are hitting most of the, of the um, points of who is your ideal client. And as you come down to the bottom of the funnel, you should be coming down to your ideal client. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So what's going to happen is just like in this group, our group is growing, but not everybody says something. Not everybody comes on the morning show, right? Not everybody um, interacts, but they're watching. They're absorbing. Some of them are making buying decisions based on the information that they're getting. They just aren't very visible. So never think that people aren't watching just because they're not um, showing up in a way that you can see because they're watching you and you might can't see them watching you. Um, so I have a lot of people that answer back to my emails. I have people who don't show up to the morning show, but will show up to a workshop, all of those things. So never forget that everybody in a group is not going to be the highly visible, highly active people, but it doesn't mean that a lot more people than who is visible aren't getting value from what you're doing and that they're not your people because they could be. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Uh, Dr. LaFerris said, how far do I go inside a Facebook group with what they say are important to them? Women over 40 want to look and feel better, but they come into my originally beauty group asking for healthy eating tips. Well, they asked that Dr. LaFerris because they, they started following you before you ever had the lashes and you used to be over there cooking up all these naturally good foods and all of this stuff. So that's again, a great example of people could be watching you. They remember everything that you've done and they're telling you, hey, I want more of that, right? So you can do some segments on healthy eating, um, but you need to always relate them back to how it makes them look and feel good, um, how it helps. Because what we know is lashes are great, but great skin is better, right? And, and, and what we know, the root of a healthy body and great skin is going to be skin products. And under that is going to be what, you, what are you eating? Right? So you can give them what they want. You just have to bring it back to what you want them to know, what you want them to um, identify with. Does that make sense, Dr. LaFerra? Because this is why we want to know all the extra things about them, because we want to know how to get and hold their attention. So there's nothing wrong with sharing things that they like that's outside of what you sell. In fact, that solves the problem of what do I talk about besides what I sell, right? But you have to always bring it back to the reason why you want them to be there, okay? The reason why you want them to be there. Uh, so what I said was, so she said her phone cut out for a few of the words. So let me recap. They know you for healthy eating because you used to cook on camera, right? So that's fine. They remember that. It's proof that they've been watching you and following you for a while. But what you want to do is you want to liken it and make it related to and relevant to what you're selling. Okay. So it's no problem to give them what they want, but you have to keep it in the realm of what you sell. So when you're cooking these, this, these meals, they need to be meals that are great for good skin, right? So that people know they can wear lashes and don't have to wear makeup because the foundation of a good skin is a good diet. Does that make sense, Dr. LaFerra? Um, so yeah, we do want to know all of this. Uh-oh, what you got, Dr. LaFerra? No, I think it does. I'm having to back up because they blocked the road. Um, but it does, it makes sense. So I was gonna start doing smoothies um so I can introduce my collagen to them that yeah. way. I love it. Start seeding for this collagen. Yes, ma'am. And let them know why they need collagen, mm -hmm. right? Because what we know yep. is in our age group, we're losing collagen and it's, it's, it's bringing our, our face into a different shape, all of the things, right? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, go ahead. Thank you. Most definitely. All right. 
are there any other questions about clear the clarity needed for marketing um because marketing is the first topic that we're talking about um for getting your business ready for more um again what i know from small business owners is you you're hitting walls and you're hitting um obstacles to making money consistently because your business isn't set up correctly right what you did was you found something to sell that people would buy and you considered yourself in business well when you when you got through that warm audience of people you know and the people that they know now you realize oh i have to do things differently to get the, the attention of people i don't know but who need me right so there are more people out there in your sector of ideal client than just the people that you know. And what you know is to have a quote unquote real business, you have to be able to sell to many people, not just the people that you know or that you're closely situated and networked to. Um, and so that's what marketing does. But your business has to be clarified for you to take advantage of marketing. Some of you are doing the, the steps of marketing, right? You're putting yourself out there. You're going live. You're creating content. You're running ads. You're doing all the things, but they're not really yielding you the consistent revenue that you're looking for. And that's probably because you're fighting being very clear. I have even some of my past clients that are still fighting the clarity of serving one ideal persona at a time, right? Again, let me tell you how I need y'all to stop comparing your now to somebody else's future. Oprah Winfrey only got all of these things, okay? Because she started out being Oprah Winfrey of the Oprah Winfrey show first for many years. When you become known for one thing first that, that serves one particular type of avatar, then you can transfer that to other things once you are successful with that one thing, okay? So what we don't want to do is start going wide with all the offers because we believe we have to have a bunch of offers to make a bunch of money. That's not true. Because let me tell you how, when you market, you're still going to have to market to one kind of avatar and do all of these things. And when you keep introducing stuff, you got to do that for every little thing. They don't all fit under one umbrella like you think, right? So you need to pick a main thing that is your forward facing thing that you are doing for one particular type of avatar and you need to think of the avatar as one person and not a group of people so that you can narrow your message even more. So I hope that that was helpful. Does anybody have any questions uh, about marketing and getting clear for the marketing? Because that's what you need before you start. Dr. LaFerra. So since, since I mentioned um, one of my challenges, recent challenges that I recently found out was a challenge, um, mm -hmm. would you... how? Like, how much would you balance the talking about um, other stuff? Like, um, like if I'm selling beauty products, um, perimenopause, uh, talking uh, or talking about, you know, the collagen and how it helps your face to, you know, to retain plumpness and, and you know, look like it's glowing and, and all that versus um, at some point talking about, um the benefits of of like having lashes and um you know growing your lashes and how they help you look younger like how how would I not distract them from what I'm trying to do um with the selling and not kind of make them start thinking about something else you know when I talk about other pain points <laughs> so again whatever you talk about you bring them back to your base right so the base is lashes but what we know is if your face is stuffed in up under them lashes, they're not going to look good, right? Nobody's going to be looking at the lashes. They're going to be looking at the fact that you look like the crit people with lashes on. So you just bring it back to the base. I want you to look beautiful. You're at an age where your body is changing and doing these things. And something as simple as a set of lashes can make you feel better. Okay, so I'm going to sell you these lashes. However, I want you to not just look better. I want you to feel better. So we're going to talk about your internal health, right? And this is where we come with the cooking and the, and the other things as Dr. LaFera, right? And then when I introduce the, the collagen, I'm introducing it as, hey, you got your lashes on, right? I'm helping you keep your skin clear with, the, with, with your diet. But I also want to help you keep the plumpness in your face. So that when you put your lashes on, you're putting it on a fully formed face. So everything has to always be connected. And that's why when we start adding in stuff that's hard to connect, people know when you're just doing a Hail Mary, right? 
So if it makes sense to connect, you should connect it. If it doesn't make sense to connect, then you're going to have to choose how you sell this thing that's not related to what's supposed to be your main thing. Or are you changing the main thing? But the question then becomes, how long have you been doing the main thing, <laughs> right? So, so in my emails, I send out because I'm, mm -hmm. I'm having to do like uh, emails that I want to pull my list, pull the people off my list that join that aren't very active that don't you know do the click through and, and don't always open like mm -hmm. I want to start talking more about the the problems of pretty much everybody the age group of people that have been purchasing and mm -hmm. so and not so much um the pain points for somebody who would buy lashes so that's that's why I asked that question because yeah. now I have to start talking to them and nurturing them through email and stuff like that and social media. Yeah, I mean, now you, can I know more about with, them. you can come up with a way that you close out everything that you say, right? That takes them back to the main thing. Like you can um, be talking about skincare, this and that, whatever, whatever. And you can end it with, and don't forget your lashes, right? Um, you could be talking about the collagen, whatever, whatever, and don't forget your lashes. Um, so you can always find a creative way to marry it because they're closely related, related enough. But if you was trying to sell lashes and umbrellas, I mean, you're gonna have to pick between lashes and umbrellas. And also don't forget uh, direct selling or the, the forward facing marketing is not the only way to sell stuff. So sometimes what we can do, if we have another, another opportunity to sell something else, you can sell that direct or you can sell that wholesale, or you can pitch that to go B2B instead of B2C. You see what I'm saying? Because there's a difference, again, I teach y'all all the time, there's a difference between what your brand is and how you make money. Your brand is the thing that you're forward-facingly marketing. How you make money could be a whole bunch of stuff that you got in the storage room that you can sell, right? And that can, that can even be the start of other businesses. But you just need to know that you're making yourself do more work then it's necessary when you go out into these other arenas that can't be married together because it takes what it takes to sell. So you're going to have to do it for one thing and you have to do all the things for the other thing. But some of y'all think y'all taking a shortcut by just talking about all the things that wants to all the people when what that makes people do is they think you're a hustle man, right? You selling all the things. And we do that as business owners, forgetting that as a client, in the same person, we go and we look for niches. We look for specialties when we go to spend our money. We're not looking for nobody to sell all the things. That, we don't look at that as convenience. And if it is convenience, guess what? We don't want to really pay that much for it. Think about, you know, Walmart that has everything. We look for low pricing when you got everything like that. So we don't want to do a race to the bottom. So as clients and customers, we look for people who, I'll give you a great idea. These days, you don't even just look for a dentist, right? You don't look for just a dentist. You look for an orthodontist, I'm sorry. And then you look for the orthodontist that specializes in Invisalign, right? So as a, as a buyer, as a client, we're looking for the specific orthodontist that does Invisalign. But when we step on the other side to become the seller, we think, oh no, let me sell Invisalign. Let me sell the, the, the tooth whitening. Let me sell this. Let me sell that. You can sell all of that. True enough. However, your forward facing stuff to get them through the door should be the same. You should be known for one thing. When they get in the door, they can be pleasantly surprised about all the options you also have. Does that make sense? Everybody. All right. Well, we ran out of time today because of the rain throwing me off for a blog talk. However, the blog is at, if you want to jump ahead, shakehannoncom forward slash ready. So go to the blog and you can jump ahead because we're going to be talking about each piece of that blog all this week. Um, we didn't ask our Monday question today, so I will be asking you on tomorrow. Uh, I don't know why Heather is still here. She's supposed to be opening that writing room, but I think she counted it for today. Uh, so no writing room, but I'll see, see you guys again here tomorrow. The studio is